Slumps are a tiring, yet natural part of humanity. When you're in one, your brain feels mushy, your emotions tapped out, and the ice cream chuck that normally looks sketchy comes off as appealing for once. As a creator, I've been recently in one of these when it comes to my reviews. Personally, I must really feel the vibes to talk about an anime I've seen, you know? One reason could be that nothing seasonal is really on right now. I stick to my three or four shows and tried to find hope in my backlog. I even asked you guys on Twitter for suggestions, and while some of them piqued my interest for future reviews, unfortunately, the vibes just weren't there. It was only after I was looking at High Dive did this beauty reintroduce itself to me. Hakume Imakochi, I can easily remember was a fun time when I originally watched it, and for me, it was my chill out show. Fast forward to now, and you can really see the ingenious thought process I went through, and it goes a little something like this. Ugh, I don't know what to review. Ooh, let's check out this side I barely use. Wait, Hakume and Makochi have a dub now? When did this happen? Welp, now I know what I'm watching again, and here we are. My review of Hakume and Makochi. Hakume and Makochi is about the life of tiny people in the woods. On paper, it's not rocket science, as this show is one part atmosphere and one part character. For atmosphere, think of this as a high res Winnie the Pooh or HD Animal Crossing with actually proportional animals. I cannot tell you how many times I got lost in its calming, warm, storybook like appeal, as the series does a fine job visually conveying its world building. Kusanagi's background art was not only what helped accomplish this, but also knew when to emphasize a scene for the sake of its world or characters. Like a storybook, I love the details put into the nature backdrops, the floating boxes that segmented a scene, the papery filter, and the colors, man! Oh my god, the colors! But a pretty storybook is never complete without its characters, and boy, did they give me such a grin. The named duo of Hakume and Makochi play off each other well. Hakume is friendly, open-minded, passionate, and makes spontaneous choices, while Makochi is more level-headed, informative, and quietly charming to the people around her. A big thing I like about their dynamic is that it never felt like it leaned more in favor of Hakume or Makochi. Instead, if one of them was having a hard time, the other would compliment their fault by lending a helping hand, while in turn, giving more characterization to the one with the fault. For example, Makochi has a lovely singing voice, while Hakume's is less to be desired. In episode 2, Hakume supports Makochi for the festival despite Makochi's desire to stay out of the limelight, while in episode 9, Makochi convinces an embarrassed and frightened Hakume to join them in singing to leave the water, when which she knows Hakume doesn't do well in. In short, the way each uses their knowledge of each other for a situation really makes their friendship more believable. Speaking of, I noticed how in this show their relationship status was on the ambiguous side. It's established that they are roommates, but then the show goes and teases that there could be something more without confirming it. Who's to say? Normally, I don't like when this happens in a series, but the show is so relaxing, I decided to let it slide. This fact is easily helped by the one-off narratives with reoccurring side characters. I had fun watching many of the episodes from Hakume's arc in the Carpentry Association, or her past, Michiko's wallet hunt, meeting Sen, or the Beetle. Oh yeah, the Beetle! Oh my god, she was so cute! This show made stag beetles of all things kawaii! In general, I just like how the plot whisks you away into its fantasy world, going at the show's pace without real worry of continuity or agency. Sure, time does go by, and it can seem like the show's time skips happen too abruptly, but I get the vibe that if you don't worry about it, then don't worry about it, man. Which I think the show pulls off that nicely. The little extra use of theming is the show's pizzazz, as it explores the meaning of friendship and enjoying one's life. Whether you live life to the fullest or take it calm and peaceful, things that eventually work out, which I think is the perfect lesson for this show. Which I recommend watching this dubbed, not mainly because of its voice talent, but for that added accessible and relaxing experience, especially if you're like me and re-watching the series again. But both voice tracks will do just fine regardless. I have really nothing of note to say about the dub, but if I had to say something, then Caitlyn French as Koharu the Beetle- Ah, oh, Why is it so cute and sassy? Why? And now it's time for another fun-filled segment of Community Corner, the time where I highlight other outlets in the anime community in hopes that other people will have a look-see. 
Today, we are getting a little artsy with a person who reminds me of home, mostly because of the fruit. But then you start asking the real questions. How hopeless are they? Hmm. Well, anyway. Hopeless Peaches is a YouTuber with over 21k subscribers who makes some really chill and entertaining art rants. A typical video would include a voiceover of her talking about whatever comes out of her brain juices while speed painting in this anime-ish pastel style. Is this fruity atmosphere a sign that my chill factor is regulated on the lifeblood of Peach Snapple? I do not know. But if you're looking for speed paint and conversating from a woman whose name questions the emotional state of soft fruit, then head on over to YouTube dot com slash hopeless peaches and check her out. In the end, if a peach falls in the woods, doesn't make a sound. Who cares? It's still tasty to eat and I will regret nothing. Now if you know of any other creative outlets in this world of anime, comment about them down below or at AM Shannon on Twitter with the hashtag Community Corner and tell me all about it. In this time where community is more important than ever, while I may be one girl on the internet, I will always try my best. In conclusion, Hakume and Makochi is a show that treats my emotional woes. Its subtle themes of life and friendship encouraged me to both get back on my feet, not in completely curing my depression, but giving me the push needed to say, hey, life takes time to get things right, and that's okay. Noticing how short this review actually is, you could see it as either a show that isn't going to surprise you, or a show that has a fully fleshed out concept that's beautifully crafted. Personally, did I read too much into this series? I have no idea, but the fact that it just allows my brain to take a vacation without sacrificing insights is amazing. And that's why, after 23 more minutes of researching the potency of kawaii beetles, I award Hakume and Makochi with a recommendation to buy it and a watchability rating of E for everyone. You can watch this with your little kids, with your dog, with your corporate advisor, and anyone who has that good case of the slopes. Easily rewatchable for not only its good vibes, but for those looking to catch more artistic details they didn't find the first time. A cute filler title to maybe watch between bigger shows or when you just want chill time. As for anime alternatives, I first point you towards the anime Konohana Kitten for its similar character dynamics and good feels. As a bonus, the shipping here is much more encouraged, so go nuts. Next, I recommend Girls Last Tour, not just because of how close the main characters are, but also in how it gives lessons on living in the moment, but in a much bleaker environment. Which finally leads me into recommending the anime Gargantua on the Virtuous Planet, simply on its background art alone. I'm still iffy on its plot and the potential it had, but solely for its design, I'd say it's at least a look at. So hopefully something here can wiggle your brain feels as you continue watching my content. My goal is still 400 subs by Labor Day and to make something worth out of myself. That is, if I can survive this godforsaken Georgia heat it's hot, hot no pika, hot no pika. Shed it out.